Abdul, I don't know what his role is. But a line uh Twenty-four. To do the butcher of a silk button, a duelist, a duelist. Okay. Number three. <clears throat> um, hard-hearted, lack and sympathetic understanding, and I have not found where it is located. Yeah. Okay. It's in like the first part, bro. Yeah, where you find it? It's uh, it's in like line four. It says Mercutio, and it says why that yeah. same oh. hell hard-hearted spirit. Okay, anybody have number four? Oh, thank you, Dan. Did you get number four? Correct. No, I didn't find it in here. But I think it's the only one. 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 Love song. 
The very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bull boy's butt shaft, and is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Oh, why, what is Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. Oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. He rests his men and rests. One, two, and the third. In your bosom! The very butcher of a silk button. A duelist? A duelist? A gentleman of the very first house of the first and second cause. Ah! The immortal Passado. The punto reverso. The high! <laughs> Fantasticals, these new tuners of accent. By Jizzle, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. <laughs> Why, is not this a lamentable thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these pardonees, who stand so much on the new form that they cannot sit at ease on the old bench? Oh, they're bones, they're bones. Oh, here comes Romeo, here comes Romeo. Without his roll, like a dried herring. Oh, flesh! Flesh! How art thou fishified? Now it is he for the numbers that Petrarch floated. Laura, to his lady, was a kitchen wench. Well, she had a bit of love to be right. Huh? <laughs> Dido, a dowdy. Cleopatra, a gypsy. Helen, a hero. Hildings, and harlots. His be a grey eye or so, but not to the purpose. Signor Romeo, bonjour. There's a French salutation to your French slop. You gave us a counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir. The slip. Can you not conceive? Ah, uh, look. Oh, good. Mercutio, my name is what's great, and in such a case as mine, a man may strain. Uh, that's as much to say, such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the ham. Meaning to catch you? Yeah, that was most kindly. <laughs> a most courteous exposition. Hey, I am the very pinch of the artist. Pinkful flower? Ah, uh, right. Why, then is my pup well flowered. Ha ha ha, sure with. Follow me this chest now till thou hast worn out thy. <laughs> that when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain after the wearing of solely a singular. Oh, single soul jest, solely singular for the single. Oh, come between us, good Benvolio, my wits fade. Wits and spurs, wits and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Okay. If our wits run the wild. Okay, so can anybody tell me, okay, 769, what illusions you guys are? Talking with your friends. Yeah, exactly. He ba they basically, talk when you talk with your friends. They're basically talking with their friends and they're having a you know, you're standing outside or you're on the phone. Nasty. And they talking uh -huh. real nasty. What is the You already know who's being raunchy. Being very raunchy. And um now the vein of this uh, continues as the nurse comes in. Because they talking nasty when he comes. 
his his herring is dried up and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Ew. So they talking nasty and then when the nurse <laughs> comes in, they just keep talking. <laughs> Okay, I just hear it's a fish, it's a type of fish. So basically, he's saying dried up old fish, you funky fish. Oh. You stink, you're nasty, whatever. Oh, wow. That's basically what he's telling him. That's why when Miss Moore said he's talking nasty, he's talking the same way you all talk when you with your friends. Yeah, I talk about social studies. You talk about life science and DNA coding. Okay, so so now that you talk about life science. Biology. Um, and biology. Exactly. He's talking biology too, but in a different form. I get the jokes. Go. jokes. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think it's a type of body. Okay, he's a guy. Oh, you're the shiver. It stretches from an inch now to an L broad. I stretch it out for that word broad, which added to the goose proves the far and wide a broad goose. Why? Is your ex better now than grooming for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. This driveling love is like a great natural that runs low down to hide his bauble in the room. Stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair, thou else have made thy tail large. Thou art deceived, I would have made it short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail, <laughs> and meant indeed to occupy the art of no longer. Peter! It's good thing you are singing or singing to to a shirt and a smile. Peter! Go on. Peter. My fan! Peter. Good Peter to hide her face, for her fan's the fear of you. No. Got you, good oh, man! Got you, good dame, fair gentle woman. Is no less, I tell you, for the bawdy hand of the dial is now upon the prick of the Out of pocket. Okay, and the word prick means. You And that's why he says it's one of the prick of noon, noon, straight up. What's a man? One gentleman that God hath made for himself to laugh. By my truth, it is well said. For himself to the mark. Hmm. Uh, gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him, and he was when you saw him. <laughs> I'm the youngest of that name for fault of the worst. You're saying well? Yeah, he's the worst. Well, no, very well, to make a thing. Why is that? Why is If you please, I desire some confidence in you. Don't go to the door, Justin. Come on, come on, come on! Go ahead, sir. Unless I hear, sir, in the Lenten pie, that is something stale and whore ere it be spent. Eh? An old hair whore and an old hair whore is very good meat in Lent. Ah, but a hair that is whore is too much for a school. Hey, my father. He spent time. Romeo, will you come to your father's? We'll sit in there. Farewell, ancient lady. Farewell, lady, lady, lady. I pray you, sir. What saucy match was this that was so full of its ropery? A gentleman this that loves to hear himself talk. And we'll speak more in a minute than he will sign to him. And I speak anything against me, I'll take him down. And I will lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks. And if I cannot find those that shall. I'm not his flirt kills, I'm not his skeins mates, and thou must stand by too, and suffer every knave to use me to his pleasure. I saw no man use you at his pleasure. If I had my weapon, you'd quickly have been out. I warrant you, I dare draw a sword to another man if I see occasion in a good quarrel. I'm so vexed at his part of my equivalence, scurvy knave. And as I told you, my young lady. Bid me inquire you out. What she did me say? I will keep to myself, but first let me tell you, 
If ye should lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of thing, as they say. For the gentleman is you. And therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly, it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentleman, and very weak deal. Yes, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto thee. Out, heart, and if faith. I will tell her as much, Lord, Lord, to be a joyful woman. Tell her, Nancy. I will tell you, sir, that you do protest, which is, I take it as a gentleman like a It her uh, device. Some means to come to shoot this afternoon, and there she shall, that fire Lawrence Selby strived and married. Here is for thy pains. Oh, the truth is that. Go to, I say you shall. Uh, th th this afternoon, sir, she shall be there. And say, good nurse, behind the abbey wall, within this hour, my man shall be with thee, and bring thee cord. It's made like a tackled stair, which to the high top gallon of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Farewell, be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell, commend me to thy mistress. Now, God in heaven, bless him. Mark you, sir. Uh, what sayest thou, my dear nurse? Is your man secret? Did you make his say? Two may keep counsel, put in one away. Oh, my man is truly still. Oh, well, sir. My mistress is the sweetest lady, Lord, Lord. When does a little prating thing. There is a new good one palace that would fail me in either. But she could so, and as they see a tone of very tone, and see him. I anger her sometimes and tell her that Alice is the proper man. But I'll meet you when I see so. She looks as big as any clout in the vessel world. Does not Rose and Romeo begin both with a letter? I, nurse, what is that, Rose? But why is she asking about Rose marrying Rose? Well, when people get married, like, is it after? It's some religion, and they use rosemary to like, like. That's part of it. But also, she, she obviously was. Why would she ask him what letter does rosemary room in? She knows her letter. Or she's she trying to get it. R. I mean, you know how to read, you know. But it's probably both. It's probably. With an R. Oh, Mucker, that's the dog's name. Ah, Chris, for the. No, no. I know it begins with some other letter. And she had the prettiest sentences of it. Of you and Rose, but it would do you good to hear it. Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times. Peter! Peter! Peter, take my hand. Start making fun of her. They call her a ball, which is a matter. Woman in charge of the process. 
And then Romeo, at the end of the scene, okay, and the connection is there, even though Shakespeare doesn't come out and say this, he gives the nurse money, money. Uh, like a pay, like what you would pay the madam for the services oh. of someone in the prophet. So the, it's like he's trying to show how the nurse is almost operating like a pimp for Juliet. And the reason he's, the he's, the reason he's showing that is to show how Juliet, even though she's somewhat complicit in this whole scheme, is really kind of innocent in the whole thing. And that this could have never transpired had the nurse been the goat in the middleman. That this could have never happened. So that's why he has them calling her names and all that when she comes up, because he wants you to make the connection between this intimate relationship which she has with Juliet. And ideally, she should have been doing what for Juliet? Helping her. Helping her how, though? Oh, okay. Did she raise her? Exactly, by blocking this illicit marriage, but instead she's the one who's helping it. So then he then she her she gets all happy after that. If you notice her tone changed. And there's a couple of things, um and then they called her old hair whore and called her all kinds of names. You know? so rude to her. They were very rude to her. And then she, but her attitude changed after he gave her the money. So go to seven seventy four. Look, she says, no, truly, sir, not a penny. Um, and she says, this afternoon, sir, we shall be there. And then, of course, you know, she, she over-communicates. She keeps talking. And she says, line 184, is your man secret? Did he ne'er hear say? Two may keep the counsel putting one away. But it tells you on the side, two can keep the secret is one is dead, is what I'm saying is. I feel like What show? You know where it got Two can't keep the secret if one of them is dead. So the idea that so that's why she asked him about you know, can your man be trusted? Because she knows she's not supposed to be doing what she's doing. Now what I don't get is how she figures this is going to work out for her when they find out what she did. You don't know. Fight. It's hard to figure out what the end game is for the nurse. Yeah, it's really hard to know. But anyway. All right, then she says, then why do you think, okay, this is just conjecture. Line 189. Yeah, why do you think the nurse even tells Romeo about Paris at that point? She's already said, I'll be your go-between. I'll work everything out. And then she just lied. She's messy. Exactly. She's one of the people that's all in the mix. Like, like, somebody I know. like those people on um on those housewives shows. Like if something happens, they always have to go back and tell the person so and so said this and so and so said that very child. So she feels like she has to tell him about mm-hmm. Paris because she's being right, messy. She's just being childish. And then she says, now she's calling. This is important. This is foreshadowing. You'll see when we get to the next act. She's saying he's a toad, a toad. And tell her that Paris is the proper man, but I want you when you say when I say so, she looks as she looks as pale as any cloud in the first quarter. So let him know, oh, He's a good guy, but she doesn't really like him. Um, and then she asked her about Rosemary and Romeo, going back to 90% of his audience would have been illiterate. I, I if you know how to read, you know Rosemary and Romeo's problems. And so he's telling you something about her. Um, she doesn't get it because she says R is a dog's name because cool. dogs do what? Brown. Oh. Oh, so she's telling me she's not really as smart. <laughs> and then of course they leave. And so oh, we talk about the um the letter from Tibo. Let's go back a little bit. So Tibo sent the letters, and to whom did he send it? He sent it he to, sent it to Romeo. Romeo. He sent it to 
Sinfolio. 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 Sinfolio.